Welcome back to our management decision tools on the topic of forecasting. We will discuss error analysis in this section. Now, we, when we forecast, we will not always get the right um, future value. Uh, that much we know for sure. So it is uh, a must that we have some sort of control and record over our errors. Errors will be the deviations from uh, the actual data. So, uh, if we so so basically, error is this term that the data minus our forecast. We think it is hundred, but data is hundred and ten. So our our error is going to be plus ten, and error itself has a sign, and that is it can be positive, it can be negative, right? Because we can overestimate, we can over forecast, or we can under forecast, and in general, when we add up cumulative error, we may end up having a very small. Uh, cumulative error but that does not mean that the the error is small it can be that it is plus 100 units of error plus negative 99 units of error giving us you know plus one that is not little that is just uh, you know cancelling out of errors so uh, essentially the cumulative error sums up all the uh, errors with the signs that means the pluses and the minuses will cancel out what use for that have we got well you see that the cumulative error is divided by n which means that we are taking the average cumulative error the average error if the average error is positive it means we will have a positive bias the more we forecast uh, the more uh, it tends to lead to uh, when we forecast the value is uh, lesser in this case so if we have positive bias data tends to be higher than our forecast so we are under forecasting most of the time if we have negative bias then basically we are uh, over for over forecasting right so the data tends to be uh, below our forecast values and both are not good both are not good it just means that we are we are changing course right we're we not that uh, we're, we're, the more we forecast the, the worse it gets now you might say that why is it important is it just for reporting to managers reporting to to people uh less so because think of it this way uh, when we build autonomous systems that can be software robot trading uh, the stock market for you it can be actual robotics you know and robotics or movements of by computers they need to anticipate a little bit and that's called forecasting so we forecast a little bit and if we realize that we realize as in the software realizes that the forecast is beginning to exhibit a positive bias then we better adjust our parameters a little bit right to make up for the bias in our forecast and then hopefully from there on our future forecast will uh, sort of be offset back to become more accurate again yeah, so it is on that basis that we can <clears throat> let the software kind of autonomously all right, uh, be self-aware of whether it is veering more and more to over-forecasting or under-forecasting. So all these are control methods that allow us to, to steer our forecast towards uh, betterment. Now, how much error have we made? Right, Because how serious is the error? Is something that we need to have a formula over to summarize the series of uh, both data and forecast being done in the past. And that can be done in three ways. So all these are uh, three different ways to achieve the same thing. You don't necessarily need all three to be done at the same time. Uh, but uh, these three measures essentially all right, have the underlying uh, thinking of getting rid of the negative errors. In other words, errors only pile up. They don't cancel. So we don't start by using cumulative error. We start from the basic data and forecast. So at individual component level, we calculate the difference for mean absolute deviation, MAD, uh, MAD, but it's not MAD. It's mean absolute deviation. We calculate the difference and we discard the error sign. All right, and then we add up everything and divide by n. What that means is just to take the average of all the errors. 
when we take the average of all the absolute errors, what remains, if it's large, is going to be uh, reflecting badly, right? And then if it's small, then it must be the case. It must be the case that on every occasion, the error committed was small in the first place. Okay, so uh, by getting rid, so, so the mad way of getting rid of the negative sign is by just throwing it away using absolute value. The mean square error way of getting rid of the negative sign is by squaring the error, which is of course sensible, except that it will magnify the numbers a little bit. All right? so, uh, so again, we square the error to get rid of the negative sign, and then we take the average by adding all the n errors, squared errors, and dividing by n. So a large MSE will reflect badly on the forecasting algorithm, and a small MSE can only result if all along the errors have been small. A zero MSE can only result from all forecasts have been exactly on the data points, right? So zero is the ideal, and so is for MAT. So MSE, MAT, they both uh, achieve the same uh, sense of the larger, the worse, the smaller, the better for the forecasting algorithm. Okay. Um, when do we use which? Now, MAD is very efficient for calculations because getting rid of the negative sign is just by taking absolute value, which is very cheap and efficient in computer software. So just throw away the minus sign. So very efficient when you have tons and tons of data to do math calculations. Uh, very efficient and because all we need to know is is it big or small compared to another mad value uh, it, it doesn't pay to spend uh, too much computer cycles to, to do this calculation so if you're doing software analysis uh, autonomous systems um, self-correcting forecasting algorithms and trading systems and robotics and whatnot consider using mad right so because it's uh, efficient in calculations MSE, on the other hand, requires squaring. And all that does is just to delete or remove the negative sign. So, but when you square, if the error is of uh, six digits kind of a situation, when you square, you're going to get maybe 12 digits, right? So it's going to be very uh, time consuming, memory consuming for the computing systems to perform the calculations and then add them up and then taking the average. Yeah? So, it is computationally more expensive, more penalizing, right? Than uh, to to calculate MSE than to calculate math. Furthermore, furthermore, when you calculate MSE, if the data XI is measured in dollars, your MSE will have the unit dollar squared. Dollar squared. If your measurement is centimeters off. Your MSE will be centimeters squared. That doesn't sound too bad, but if you're doing length measurements, having area kind of units coming up is a bit mind boggling, right? Uh, dollar square is incomprehensible. But that kind of uh, squaring of the unit, fortunately, doesn't come with MAD. So again, MAD has some advantages. So why do we keep MSE? Uh, because it is mathematically easier to operate using MSE. It has simplicity, it has square. Right, you can uh, differentiate it, you can uh, you know, sum it easily, operate it mathematically. Whereas with absolute function, it's just you know, uh, maddening for uh, people to operate using absolute symbols and functions. Now, the, the sort of uh, drawback of MSC having a squared unit can be uh, kind of uh, get gotten rid of using root mean square error. So what we do is we take the MSE as it is and then apply the square root to get RMSE. So this is analytically very nice. Okay, you may not like the square root and the squaring, but it is easy to operate if you want to analyze the mathematics behind. So RMSE quite preferred for analysis and for reporting purposes because uh, RMSE has this uh, nice feature that the unit is back to the same unit as the data. So uh, easier to report, easier to analyze, and uh, in some sense, it's also more commonly discussed than MAD.
All right, so because of all these different application areas, we should know both. That would be uh, equipping you with more knowledge to handle uh, anything that's being thrown at you. Okay. All right, so that's for data analysis.